Okay, so uh, let me start with an honest admission here, which I won't do very often, and that is that when I was in high school, I was a total geek. I mean, the worst kind of geek who could possibly... I, I carried a briefcase with me to school. Does that tell you? I was captain of the debate team. I, was, I couldn't get a date if I paid somebody for it. I was a total and complete nerd. All right, and then I went to Williams College, a very fancy school. Of course, my grades were good, and I was gonna be a lawyer, so I was a pre-law, and I was taking law classes, and I was as much of a geek at Williams as I was, and that's a school that's got big athletic guys, well, on a football team, and I think they call me mothball, actually. So I started off terrible, there's no question about it, and probably if I hadn't found some interesting thing that changed my life, I probably would have been a geek for the rest of my life. Maybe I'd be living on Park Avenue as a part, maybe I fucked up, but, you don't know. But anyway, I was a disaster. Anyway, what happened was that at Williams, they had this thing called 414, which is uh, you take four courses in the, in the fall, then they have this January one course called the Jan Plan or Winter Study Program, and then they have four courses in the spring. And so in my uh, sophomore year, I, you sign up for the January program, and they give you choices, and you, you know, a, a, a poverty law or, you know, business law, whatever kind of crap I could find, and you have to put four choices down. And I, you know, I thought I would get my, like, legal, whatever crap, political science choice. And the fourth one I put down, photography, because I didn't know what else to do. And so, and I, I, I actually had a camera, but I never really used it. And, and I got the photography thing. I was, that's what I got put into. And so I, I, I thought, I was, what am I going to do here? So I, they committed me to do this photography thing for the month of January. And I got my little camera. And this guy, Howie Levitz, who I remain very good friends with, who's still up in Williamstown, who taught the class. And suddenly something very strange happened to me. It wasn't so much the taking pictures, which was, you know, I mean, I was okay at it. But I wasn't a genius. I was no Ansel Adams. I was no Bob Christ. But what happened was the camera gave me a reason to, to talk to people and to inject myself into places that I wouldn't normally have injected myself into. So, you know, when I had the camera, I had an excuse to go and, and, and you know, go, go. I ended up, actually, I dropped out, and that's another story, and I went down to Appalachia, and I lived, I worked in a coal mine, and I lived with a coal mining family, and, you know, I mean, so I, if I didn't have the camera, I couldn't have gone and said, well, you know, I'm just here to hang out with, you know, the Appalachians, because I want to see what it's like, but because I was a photographer, I had a reason to do that. This was a, this, the camera was a fantastic entree, and it, it, it allowed me to meet people and to open up and to uh, get in touch with a part of my personality that I have really existed before. I mean, there was the creative side, but there was also the opportunity with the interact with people to have a reason for being in places that I normally wouldn't be allowed to be in. And this was fantastic. So I dropped out, uh, it took a year, and I dropped out, and I went to live in a, work in a coal mine in, in uh, uh, Heinemann or Knott County, uh, um, uh, Harlan County, Kentucky, Believe me, I'm a little Jewish guy. To work in a coal mine was weird enough, and to live with coal miners exposed me to a whole different kind of people. And after that, I went out to a farm in the middle of Iowa, and I became a farm laborer. I lived with farmers, and then I became a construction worker. That's a completely different, weird story. But because I had the camera, I always had a reason to be in some place that I shouldn't have been. And this was fantastic. I never thought I could, well, I mean, it was, you know, fun then. And then I never thought I could really have a career in, in doing this and essentially taking pictures. And when I graduated, I spent three years traveling around the world. I went across the Sahara Desert with Tuareg Bedouin. And I, because I had a camera, you know, I had a reason to be there. And then I went to Iraq and Iran and India and Nepal and up in the Himalayas and all these fantastic, I lived in a Palestinian refugee camp. And the camera was the reason to be there. What really amazed me, and this is the part I really want to talk to you about, is that not only is this thing life-changing, this tool, this, this piece of technology is life-changing, but it also turned out that I could make a very good living at it because, because I was able to inject myself in these places and because I brought a camera along with me, I had something that I could sell and it turned out that people actually wanted to pay for it. Now, photography is not a great profession. As anybody professional photographer knows, the thing dried up largely because of Instagram and, you know, iPhones and stuff like that. But video is a, a, a business that's absolutely exploding. And the, the thing is that, that the, the, the camera now is a video camera. Not only does it give you access like it did, like a still camera did for me when I was in my 20s, but it creates a product that there's an almost limitless 
demand for, which is the most astonishing part of the whole story. Because when I was first starting, there were you know three networks, ABC, NBC, and CBS. And if you wanted to work for them, you wanted to make product for them, you had to be an employee. So I went to work for CBS, but you know I quit 30 years ago and took my little camera because it was what I had learned as being a photographer. And I thought, screw it, I can do this on my own. And because I took my little video camera and I went to Cambodia with the Khmer Rouge and I went to find the index case for AIDS when that was a big story in, in uh, Uganda, I started to come back with video that people would pay a lot, uh, I mean, $25,000, $50,000, a lot of money. Um, I'm a VJ student, I sent you a message, but I didn't get a response. I didn't get it, so email me directly at michael at rosenblum, R-O-S-E-N-B-L-U-M, TV dot com, Kumasi Niami, and I will answer you. I answer everybody. My whole goal in life is to help you live the kind of life that I lived, and it's been a fantastic life. Just an extraordinary kind of an existence that, you know, as that geek in high school, I never could have imagined that I would be the guy running around the world with a camera, going to all these incredible places in India and Cambodia and Africa and stuff, and then actually making a, you know, substantial amount of money uh, uh, um, with the video camera. And you can do this. The opportunities today are a million times, and that's no exaggeration, greater they were when I graduated from school and I started looking for my first job because every, there's, there's, there's 40,000 cable channels in the world, they all need content. Every website has a need for video content. And now, uh, if you read uh, VJ World today, uh, there, which I'll put up later, there's a piece about a store in London that's starting its own broadcast center to sell stuff. So this skill of being able to tell stories with a video camera uh, is is life changing, and for me, this is the profession that I think you really ought to embrace. So um, go out there, get the camera, get on the VJ.com and learn how to do this. But for me, it took me from being a, a total unmitigated geek on my way to, on my way to law school to a, a profession that you know for the last thirty years has been says Mark Benjamin, who does the same thing absolutely the most astonishing experience of a lifetime and, and I would urge you to do this. So join up, figure out how to do it, check out the story and uh, check out the VJ.com and I will uh, talk to you probably tomorrow. See you later.